I hope that video challenged you to think a little bit about the question, what do you believe? Think about it for a minute. What is it that you believe? There's beliefs about a lot of different things. We just heard a lot of different opinions, a lot of different responses to what these young people believed in. I think it's a fair question today. I think it's a question we all should think about. What do we believe in? Some of you probably haven't considered it too deeply. Others of you have, have considered it so deeply that you could state exactly what you believe. We have beliefs about everything, don't we? One of my beliefs is that you catch more fish when it's raining. Why would I believe that? Well, one day I was fishing, it started raining, and I caught a lot of fish. The problem with my belief in that is, is I can't really back it up with any scientific proof, and every time it rains and I go fishing, I don't necessarily catch fish, but yet I still have this in my head that fish bite better when it's, when it's raining because I experienced it one time. I think and believe that our football team is going to win its next game against Coco next week. You believe that? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to them and our, our volleyball team. We're, we're hoping for their win. So we, we have this belief system. So if we, just take, if we just take the events of this past week, for example. So using our football team as an example, they had been mired in a losing streak. We all kind of know our program uh, went down and, and last year when Coach Bonneville came in, we only had a, a handful of, of, of players and it was a long season last year. Long season. And then to taste victory. It changes how you think. It changes your outlook. It creates confidence. We begin to understand that the experience of what we believe in, and if we believe in it deeply enough, and if we work hard enough, we can begin to experience different things. Well, the same is true about our faith. What do you believe in? Some of you would say, well, I, I believe in God. And so I would follow that up with the question, okay, that's, that's good, why? Because you've been taught? Because you are attending a, attending a Christian school and you go to chapel and, and you're hearing a lot about this God and you're hearing a lot about Jesus? And so I believe in him. Some others of you would say, well, I think that we should respect everybody's God. And there are many different gods. It's called pluralism. Some of you may say, well, I'm not sure what I believe, or in fact, I believe there is no God. I would, I would venture to say this morning that among us, our belief systems vary, and they vary quite drastically as to how we believe, or what we believe, or who we believe. And we're still being formed. You're still being transformed. Here's what I want to tell you, and here's part of what I want to share today is, is that our belief is not just simply what we know. It can't just be intellect. And it can't be as simple as some of the, of the young people in this video shared, well, I believe in I believe in me, I believe in you, I believe in hope, I believe in love. It's not that simple. What does that belief look like? How does it transform you? How does it change the way you are? And my prayer today is that as we're sitting here together for just a few minutes, that you would answer the question, what do you believe? And even the follow-up question, why do you believe? It's not enough to just say we believe. We need to know why we believe. Throughout your life, your belief system will be challenged, okay? So whatever it is that you believe in will be challenged. And we live in a world where pretty much we have to be accepting of everything. But the problem with that is, is there's no absolute truth that we can hang our hat on. So what do you believe? I was speaking with a family member, uh, a, a, a young, much younger than me. I don't want to identify him because I don't want anybody to figure out who it was. But, but they said to me, they said to me, doesn't what I believe and what the Bible teaches change with the culture? And I had a very simple answer. No, it doesn't. 
And then they, they, they wanted to argue with me about that. Yeah, but it's not the same as it was when you were growing up. I said, no, it's not. Nor is it the same when I was growing up as when my parents or my grandparents or, or what it was 200-something uh, years ago when this country was, was formed or, or how it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the earth. Culture changes all the time, but truth remains. And so we have to know what we believe in and why we believe in it. Otherwise, truth can be whatever you want it to be, whenever you want it to be. And here's the danger in that. The danger in that is it can lead us down paths that we can't return from. Not having an absolute understanding of truth leaves us wandering and can cause a lot of problems in your life. I want to talk today about a guy named Nick. His name was Nicodemus, um, but we're going to call him Nick because not too many people use the word Nicodemus, right? Any Nicodemus? Anybody called Nicodemus here? No. How about Nick? We got any Nicks? We got one Nick. All right. Well, this is not that Nick. Okay. So Nick, you just play along. So this Nick was alive in the time of Jesus. So we're going back a long time. And this guy, Nick. Well, the question we need to ask is, who is Nick? So, in, in the third chapter of John, we find out about this guy named Nicodemus. And it says that he was a religious leader who was a Pharisee. So, he's an adult, okay? He's already been through all of his schooling. We know he's a very smart man. He's part of what they call the Sanhedrin. Now, that may not mean a whole lot to you, but what that really meant was if he was alive today, he would be on the religious council board in Washington, D.C. He was a, a, a very high-ranking individual. He was very smart. He knew what he believed. He knew what the Scripture said. He knew the Jewish law. He knew all of those things, and he taught others. We also find in the Scripture that, that Nick, well, Nick had a lot of wealth. Nick, Nick had money, so he was very successful. He was probably idolized by his neighbors and by his friends and, and by his colleagues. And so, when you get the picture of who Nick is, so we can understand this story better. Nick was not some, some individual who didn't, knew, who didn't know what he believed. He knew very much what he believed. In fact, he taught others so that they would know what they believed. So they could answer the question that I'm asking you today. What is it that you believe? Nick taught them what they believed. Nick was that person who they looked up to. He was respected, a leader, somebody of pretty big importance. And as we begin to see the story of Nick, I want you to know that his world was rocked. Everything that he believed in was challenged when he began to see and he encountered this man that we call Jesus. All right, so Nick, you know who he is. He knows what he believes. And now he begins to see this man called Jesus around town. And, and this man named Jesus, as he's watching him, he's seeing this, this man named Jesus, he's seeing him do miracles. So he, he heals a blind man. He heals a man who, who can't walk. He casts evil spirits out of, of some people. Nick is watching all of this. And Nick is thrown into a world of confusion. And here's why. What he believed in was being challenged. What he believed in didn't necessarily necessary align with the things that he was seeing. This is out of the ordinary stuff. This wasn't stuff that, that they were experiencing. That's probably happened to you, not to this extreme. But, but some of the things that you believe have been challenged as you go through and you experience different things in life. So here's what Nick did. Nick decided that he would go see Jesus. So obviously they were in the same town. He obviously knew where Jesus was. And so Nick sets out to go see Jesus. 
And so the question we would ask ourselves is, well, why did, he, why did he come? Why did he go see Jesus? Well, he was troubled. He had reached a place in his life where his belief system didn't necessarily support the things that he was experiencing in life. So here's the thing. What is it that you're experiencing? Some of you are falling asleep on me. I'm going to keep you awake. What is it that you're experiencing? What, what is it that we're experiencing in life? Things that we experience in life can challenge our belief system. So for you, you guys are all football players, or some of you are, your band, your, which I love the video online. I just want to say band and, and cheerleaders, the way that you guys all came together and, and celebrated together and supported each other, that's what school unity looks like, right? So it's not just celebrating one of us or, or athletes or, or musicians. What, it's celebrating all of us. Even those of us who we sit in the stands and we enjoy the game and we cheer. That, that's what it looks like. So, so our belief systems over time can be challenged. <clears throat> we could begin believing that, well, we're just no good. We'll, we can never win. <clears throat> or we can never reach the very top of, of, of what it is that we're achieving for. And then we begin to experience some things that challenge that. Well, wait a minute. <clears throat> we, we can win. Or it could be reversed. You can think that you can't lose. And, and then that's challenged because, hey, there's always somebody bigger, better, and badder than you are. You know that? Always. That's just the way it is. And, and so we can be challenged in that light. We can be challenged in the same way to think, well, what is it that I believe? Well, Nick's belief system was challenged. He had been teaching all the laws. And here this man named Jesus comes along and he starts teaching a different, a different type of religion. He starts talking about instead of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, if someone slaps you, don't hit them back. Turn the other cheek and let them hit you again. What kind of teaching is that? That challenges the belief system that, that Nick was in and, and all the things. And it says, don't just love those who love you. Everybody loves their friends. Love people who are your enemies. In fact, pray for your enemies. Whoa. Nick's, Nick's belief system was being blown to pieces. The things that he taught are not being lived in this man named Jesus. And there's something about Jesus that's different than anybody else that Nick had ever encountered. Something is totally different about this man, Jesus. And so Nick goes to his house. He wants his questions answered. I think that's an amazing thing. What I want to say to you students is, you have questions. When you have questions, ask. Ask your teachers. Ask some of your friends who you look up to. But ultimately, read and ask what God's Word says about it. Because what someone may believe may not be accurate, but the Word of God is the biblical, infallible, authoritative Word of God that if you will take it and apply it in your life, you will find success just putting the principles of the Bible in place. Even if you don't believe in it. You practice the, here's the thing, in the business world today, they, they practice a lot of business principles. And in those business principles, they have success. Doesn't mean they necessarily believe. They're just practicing these principles. The Bible is the absolute truth. So Nick goes, and here it is in verse 2. He says, after dark one evening, he, Nick, came to speak with Jesus. And he says, Rabbi, which means teacher, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Now we need to pause right there. Here's a very important man, a, a really important teacher. And here's this guy named Jesus. And gosh, he didn't have any degrees. He didn't have um, any of the credentials that, that Nicodemus had. He didn't have any of that stuff. Yet Nicodemus recognized that in this man, Jesus, there's something different. He says to him, we all know that God has sent you. He has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. You see, there's a big difference in what we believe and what it looks like. You can believe in something all day long, but does it translate into how your life looks? For Jesus, he says, your signs are evidence that, that God is with you. It, it's very obvious that, that God is with you. 
It's interesting that Nicodemus went at night. Now think about it. If you didn't any, want anybody to see you, if you wanted to sneak around, if, if, please don't do this, all right? But if you wanted to sneak out of the house, you probably wouldn't need to do it in, in broad daylight, right? Because it's okay probably to go out of the house. When do we do things that we want to be a little sneaky about, huh? When no one's looking? Or when no one can see you. And so Nicodemus, so, so Nick is thinking, I want to go, I want to go talk to Jesus, but I really don't want anybody to know I'm talking to Jesus. I, I want to go talk to Jesus. I need some answers, but, but I, I, I really don't want my, my colleagues, I don't want my, the people that, that look to me as the teacher, I, I really don't want them to know that I'm going. Why, why else would the scripture emphasized that he went at night. He went at night because he wanted his questions answered and he didn't want anybody to know that he was asking the questions. That's our human nature, okay? We don't want to look stupid or we don't want to look confused. And we've all heard, well, there's no stupid question, except sometimes I ask some questions and, and everybody laughed. I thought, well, that must have been a stupid question. But for me, I needed the answer. But here's the thing, as we look at all of this, is, is that Nicodemus knew that he had to go, and so he went. And here's what I would say to you, ask the questions. If you need to do it in private, do it in private. But I, I applaud Nicodemus that he would go and that he would ask the questions instead of just wondering. You see, he was in such a state that he couldn't continue to do what he was doing until he understood more about Jesus. He knew certain things. He knew that, they were, that he was from God. He knew that the things that he was seeing was evidence that God was with him. And so he wanted to ask questions. I think he was really curious too. I think he had a lot of curiosity when it came to Jesus. Really, really super curious. I got a phone call yesterday from a friend, and they just moved down here from Ohio like four months ago. How many of you know Dor is it Dorian? 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 We got this little storm out there, and she's going to come see us apparently this, this weekend, ruin our labor, labor Day. You get a, finally get a three-day weekend, and we got a hurricane. What are we going to do with that? So he, he's calling me up, and he is anxious, and he's, he lives in a mobile home, and he says, what do I do? <laughs> I said, well... You don't, stay in, you don't stay there during a hurricane. Well, what about my windows? Are they going to blow in? I said, maybe. Well, what do I do? I said, well, you can put plywood up. And he goes through all these series of questions. And then he, he's, he just keeps asking, well, well, where's the worst place to be? If, in this, what's what's the, worst, the worst winds in a storm? I said, well, it's usually the, the right front quadrant of the storm is where the worst winds are. He goes, the ones that we're projected to get? I said, yeah, those all this anxiety. He says, well, where, where, where can I go? I said, well, Atlantic High School will, will be open. You can go there. All of these questions. You know why? Because he's never experienced a hurricane. Good for him. How many of you here haven't, have never experienced a hurricane? See, I, I, if I ask, okay, are you, is there a little bit of anxiety? A little bit of anxious? No, you guys are cool. I'm just going to tell you, I'm like, ugh, I'm excited. If you can see inside me, it's just all, it's like, ugh. You know, it's just, you know, and, and the bad part of that is I have a lot of real estate property, which just poof, it's like, oh, well, whatever, you know. It's all, it's all God's, right? So, so how many of you experienced a hurricane? Yeah, we're vets. How many of you looking forward to experiencing another hurricane? See, you're young and naive. I'm just telling you, you're naive. <laughs> What's that? The, the wave. So, so here, yeah, oh, surfers. Oh, okay. So, so here's the thing, all right? Sometimes the things that, that, that get us the most excited can create some of the, the drama in our life too, okay? So there's all this curiosity in this man named Nick, and, and he goes to Jesus, and he tells Jesus what he knows. And that's just like us. We, we, we establish, here's who I am, and here's what I know. See, that's, that's, the, that's where you have to start, guys, gals. You have to start with saying, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. Whatever it is, whether it's 
popular or not popular. Establish, understand what, what it is you believe and why you believe it. I can tell you Nicodemus why he believed what he believed because that was what he was taught. He was a Jew. And so Jews believed in the Bible, the Scripture, the Old Testament. He believed it because he believed it to be true. And in fact, it, it is true. It's, it's history, not just in the Bible, but in the, in the history books. We know that the events that took place in the Bible are real events. These things really happen. And so that's what he believed. And now his belief is being challenged. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's my prayer that you are challenged today, and not just today, you're challenged every day that you come to school in a loving, caring way so that you would experience not religion, but a relationship. You see, that's what separates Christianity from every other religion there is. It's not about what you do or don't do. It's about whose you are. It's about a relationship with one who offers love and forgiveness of our sins. One that says that I have a future for you, that I'm with you, that I'll help you, that I'll guide you. You see, that's the difference. What is it that you believe? And are you willing to come? I think another fair question to ask is, well, what did Nicodemus learn when he got there? So Nick, Nick gets with Jesus. He asks Oh, he doesn't ask any questions. He simply says, well, this is who I think you are. I know you're from God, and I know you're a teacher, and I see these miraculous signs. And here's Jesus' reply. It's, it's, it's really an odd reply. Jesus says, well, Nick, I'll tell you the truth. Unless you're born again, the kingdom of God that you teach about, you'll never see it. Nick, I'm going to tell you truth here. Nick... Listen, truth, here's absolute truth. Unless you're born again, you will never experience, you'll never see this kingdom of God that you read about in the scriptures. I think Nick's response was perfect. So he says, well, what do you mean? <laughs> How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? That's a fair question, isn't it? I think that's probably the question that I would have asked. I don't understand. How many times do we ask questions and the answer isn't one that we can necessarily understand in the moment? We can't necessarily understand it. So he says, well, what do you mean? I, I can't go back in my mother's womb. And here Jesus says, well, I'll assure you this, that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. It's not a physical rebirth, it's a spiritual birth. Being born again is a spiritual act that we experience when we accept Jesus Christ into our life. Not once we get our life all fixed and cleaned up so that we can accept Jesus. You'll never, you'll never be able to do it. Jesus takes you where you are, as you are, for who you are. It's a spiritual rebirth. And here Nicodemus, being this religious teacher, is being taught, and it was so baffling. Jesus says to him, don't be surprised. So I'm thinking Nick is just like, what? Well, he says, Nick, don't be surprised. The wind blows wherever it wants. So Jesus gives him an excuse, or not an excuse, but an example. He gives him this example. The wind blows wherever it wants, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So in the same way, you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. So Jesus is telling them, listen, you'll never be able to explain this. You'll never be able to reason what I'm telling you in your mind. All of your teaching, all of the things that you are learning, you cannot take this truth and explain it in the same way that you can't explain where the wind comes from. You know there's a wind because you feel it, but you don't see where it comes from and you don't see where it goes. Yet we know the wind's blowing. And so Nick asked yet another question. How are these things possible? How are these things possible? It's a fair question. How are they possible? See, here's the thing. I think he left that meeting with Jesus more confused than when he went. I think after he had been with Jesus, 
He heard, yet he didn't fully comprehend. He didn't fully understand. You see, there's a journey we have to go on oftentimes. And it's a journey that we walk our whole life. And that is that relationship thing I'm telling you about with Jesus. The more you learn, the more you're around, the more you trust in him, the more you begin to experience different things. So Nicodemus leaves this meeting. Jesus lives his life. Jesus does miracles. Jesus has a following. Jesus is then turned on by the people. And we all know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was condemned to a cross, nailed to the cross, and that he died on a cross. I wonder what Nicodemus was thinking. There is the teacher, the one I know is from God, the one that I know hung on that cross, and now he's dead. And he was teaching me about a spiritual rebirth. There had to be a moment of confusion. Yet three days later, when Nicodemus began to hear, hear the tale around town, Jesus' tomb's empty. His tomb's empty. He, he, he's, he, he's alive. He's been seen. But I want to take you back. Because when Nicodemus saw Jesus hanging on the cross, something had happened in his life. From the time then chapter 3 where Jesus uh, met with, or Nicodemus went and met with Jesus till the time that Jesus was, was put on that cross. Don't know how long it was. Probably a couple years. Nicodemus is watching. Nicodemus experiences something. Because remember the Nicodemus who snuck off to talk to Jesus at night? In John chapter 19, we see what he learned. It's not John 1, it's John 19, 38, 39. Jesus has died afterward, this man named Joseph from Arimathea, who was a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders. I mean, they're killing, they're killing Christians, they're killing Jesus. They're not around, um, you know, parading their belief because they could be killed for it. So he asked Pilate, Joseph asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body down. All of a sudden, this, this disciple who was living in secret comes out and says, you know what, this is who I believe in, and my God is hanging on a cross, and I'm going to go ask him to see if I can take him down. And guess who's with Joseph? With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night, now in broad daylight. A major event. You see the people gathered to watch the crucifixion. And Nicodemus now says, you know, I don't care. I don't care who sees me. And he, along with Joseph, take Jesus down from the cross, prepare his body for burial, and place him in a tomb. You see, that's a belief system that was challenged and changed. And so today, what do you believe? I'm going to give you the answer. Here's what you believe. What you believe to be true is not proven by what you say or think, but it's what is proven by what you trust in when you are in need. So here it is. When you're in need, when you're in a difficult spot, what is it that you believe in? That's where you'll go. Do you go to Jesus? Now, when I was your age, I leaned on my parents pretty heavily. I went to my parents for almost everything. But there were things as I got older that I began to realize my parents couldn't help me with. Plus, if they, if they knew about it, they'd probably punish me and restrict me or whatever. You know, it's like, well, I'm not going to let them know about this. <clears throat> but what is it that you turn to when you're going through a difficult time? You turn to your friends, parents. It's not a bad thing. Ultimately, though, the question is, what do you believe in when it comes to your faith? Ultimately, I hope that you go to Jesus. And in this John chapter 3, when Nicodemus leaves, it's that scripture that we read earlier. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. 
I'm going to ask Pastor Brent to come. And he's going to close our time together.